بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد كن في الدنيا كأنك غريب أو آبر السبيل أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام أزد عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنه ما سيز النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام advise me be in this world as if you are a stranger, a wayfarer, a traveler. And he used to say, إِذَا أَمْسَيْتَ فَلَا تَنْدَذِرِ السَّبَحْ If you are alive in the evening, do not expect to live until the morning. وَإِذَا أَسْبَحْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَذِرِ الْمَسَحْ And if you are alive in the morning, you have tawfiq and the opportunity to wake up in the morning. Don't live your day. Don't pass your day with hope that you will see the evening. Love every moment like it is your last. Take advantage of your health before sickness comes. And take advantage of your life before death comes. So when a person travels as well, you should imagine he is traveling in this world in real time. But in reality, he's traveling to the Akhirah. So what should I prepare and what steps I need to implement to make sure that I am prepared for the real journey? This journey is a temporary journey, but I should be cognizant of the fact that there will be a permanent destination and I need to prepare for that. The commentators of Hadith has mentioned that from this hadith we take lesson, do not make this world your home, do not intend to stay very long, do not plan to build in this world permanently and do not connect your heart like a traveler, a wayfarer does not connect himself to any place, to any valuable asset on his journey, he does not attach himself to that, he does not make his home and he does not get involved in all these items. فيها. He does not engage himself in activities which will distract him from his destination. جاء رجل إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله He inquired, O Nabi of Allah, دلني على عمل إذا عملته Tell me such an action if I practice on it, Allah will love me and people will love me as well. Izhad fi dunya yuhibbak Allah. Abstain from the world, all the luxuries, all the deception. Allah will love you. Wazhad fi ma'inda nas. And do not be desirous of what people have. Abstain. Yuhibbak al nas. And people will love you. So. When a person is a traveler, then he abstains. He doesn't enjoy you are moving from point A to point B. You want to get to your destination. En route, you will not be distracted and you will try to identify what is beneficial for you and what is harmful as well. So when a person is traveling as well abroad, then there are a lot of things which a person should be cognizant he should take precaution, he should be cautious as well and he should be cautious of the deception from the time he leaves till the time he returns, he should be cautious of deception. Never put anything by anyone, no matter how trustworthy they seem. Let us say a person was with his wife, she was reading a, a magazine, she showed him a photograph of a very rare expensive fur, fur coat. So she told the husband, she said, honey, I, I like this. So the husband said to her, do you want this? So she smiled and she said, yes, please. So the husband went, he took a scissor, he cut out the image and gave it to his wife. He cut out the image and gave it to his wife. So don't put anything by anyone. The best advice is whatever you're going to do, do research properly yourself and don't be contented that you have it under control. So expect the worst, 
but expect the best but prepare for the worst you are hopeful that everything will go well but in prepping wise prepare for the worst so the youngster came into the house crying after he went fishing with his father so the mother inquired that son what's wrong why are you in tears so the boy explained that dad and i were gone fishing he hooked a very big giant fish it is the biggest we've ever seen but while we were reeling it in the line broke and the fish got away so the mother tried to console her young son and said oh son you know things come and go life is like that and you're a big boy now you shouldn't be crying about a loss an accident it just happened now it's part of life she tried to console him you should have just laughed it off you should have just laughed it off so the boy in tears said but mom that's what i did that's what i did i laughed it off and a few smacks came from the father so travelin as well um as certain things we need to do make sure the mother gave him advice he did exactly it it, it got him further away in bigger trouble so sometimes we we console and we think so we know it all and we got it right but that's not the way to go so in traveling which is a big problem and is getting worse is hidden cameras bugs audio visual surveillance so part of the cia program as well in the past the cia have been known to purchase to buy to invest in hotels and they had set up audio visual bugging surveillance mechanisms in place so hotels and other places are the most unsafe places on earth if you are not cognizant of these factors so visual bugs are more easier to detect audio are more difficult so a bug sweep so firstly how they are using technology you need also to be vigilant and see what technology is out there so bug detectors out of rf detectors uh camera de- hidden camera detectives besides the cia predators pedo files peeping toms so voyeur has become again it is it is haram it is not permissible to to infringe on anybody's privacy so sometimes a person goes online they book a holiday home it seems very cheap or people are renting apartments but those entire apartments and homes have been wired so the price is very cheap but you are the bait and they want to catch you and there's different scams from promoting these videos on the dark web where people can see privacy likewise predators who after identifying somebody who is staying in that house and they know that this is an opportunity then they spike certain drinks and commit zina and rape etc also known abduction syndicates who need to abduct girls so there there a lot of bad things can happen and as the people of iman we do not get caught so you have to be very vigilant you have to be very cautious when booking anywhere else even in our own homes where bugs have been placed through workers staff etc this is a, a serious offense and we have to, it's it's becoming very common in vogue so one person f- uh, booked through a b and b and he found a camera in a smoke detector and live streaming there was a live stream feed which he detected so uh, the, the the normal since he was a it person he did a wifi network scan and through these wifi network scans you can identify which cameras 
and if it is a live feed so uh, he, he informed the media called authorities and they found that there were other cameras as well so this do these devices are there another lady found a remote control camera in the apartment which she stayed for a long time and a lot of her privacy she was filmed and a lot of her privacy her conversations etc relationship information was breached another person also booked uh, in Airbnb and, he, and they, the, the family also did the, the scan as well so it's, it's a good habit to download these uh, various apps network mapper network scanner IP scanner it's not expensive likewise the specific apps which you can download to detect hidden cameras to deduct these these, these uh, gadgets so doing a network scan, a port scan, a person can see the IP addresses, find out if there's any other devices, if it's listed, IP camera, etc. And, and, and work back, backwards, how many devices are there? Likewise, the codes, when a person is scanning the different ports and which devices and which services are being provided. So if it is an RDP, so remotely controlled desktop of a computer or RTMP, RTSP for video streaming. So these scans will help you identify these cameras. And uh, that's the first way. So use technology to bypass technology. Then just a simple scan of the room itself. So a person needs to thoroughly check the entire room and identify things which does not seem in its place or looks abnormal a mountain dew a drink somewhere placed as a as a decoration people have found them to be cameras likewise in the room if the image so they've got pictures artwork but it's not in its right place so the light will help you so switch off the light in the room firstly and see if you can see the lenses if you can see the red lights if you can see the night vision in in in, in the daytime look for anything so from a, a smoke detector so clothing hooks mirrors will come to that hair dryers it's connected to electric socket so anything that has power to it so you should have a rule when you come into a hotel room into a place of residence scan the place thoroughly bedside lamps even plant decor so you have the ones which are connected to power and the one which work remotely where they've got their own power source any electronic device even screws wall clocks are, are quite common clothes hooks alarm clocks as well have uh, hidden cameras in them it can be even pens usb drives charging plugs power banks even stuffed animals the eyes have cameras lava lamps any hole in the wall a phone charger even a shampoo bottle deodorant sticks somebody a co-worker gave a gift a cactus decor a decorative item but there was a hidden camera when they kicked it over by mistake and it broke and they found the camera your aircon vents so you've got the slits but behind it there can be cameras your air fresheners in bathrooms and it's not restricted to your hotel room alone so the air fresheners the sprinklers the electric sockets even in public places like bathrooms in the malls when you're traveling at the airports and that's not necessarily has been placed by the authorities but people who are peeping toms and they want to snoop so they stay there and then they go and they do these installations and then they've got access to the wi-fi so they set up the ip addresses and then they uh, infringe on the privacy of people so it's good to keep a pack of those stickers you get these small stickers anywhere so first unplug cover everything so when you go to the room start with unplugging everything put everything in the drawer 
whatever you're doubtful, put a towel, put a cloth over it, the bathroom towel, there's a lot of towels that is provided. Then anywhere where there is a view, so not necessarily, even your, you can be on, the, on a higher floor, on another floor, somebody else from another building could be watching you. So make sure your curtains are closed, especially at night. Then the peepholes. So people have been known to put cameras through the peepholes from the next door room, from under the door. So you need to close the peepholes. You need to close under the door as well for cameras to be put. And uh, anything where you think so, a dot or possibly somebody will want to watch you, like the bed, like the shower. So look at that places and see where somebody would have put a camera or a two-way mirror as well. And then when you have a doubt, take these stickers and, and close it up. So uh, if you switch the light off and, and you take your, your camera, normally it's the front camera, not the back camera. Then you could inspect and you will see the red dots because there's no RF filters there. If you've got the gadgets, then very good. So vulnerability can be anywhere. So from the restrooms to dressing rooms to locker rooms, your sitter should be covered all the time and uh, you need to take precautions as well. So ideal places in the corner of the room, pictures, paintings, um, doorway mirrors. So there's mirrors that are there, but they could be somebody on the other side of the room or they could have a two-way mirror where a camera is behind that as well. So this is quite common in just 2012 stats shows that there were 2,400 cases of illegal filming. And up to 2017, it increases to, increase to 6,700. So, and don't put it past anyone even in the hospital. So in a, a Californian hospital in the delivery rooms, they found footage of spy cameras where 1,800 patients were recorded secretly. So can we imagine in a private hospital labor, the delivery room? So even as a patient, you don't know. So for a two-way mirror, there's the finger nail test. So you put your finger on the mirror and you can see the reflection. So if uh, the two-way mirror, the test, you put it and you see if it is close to your finger or it is further away from the finger, this will reveal what type of mirror it is. So in a, it's called the fingernail test, where you can see if it's a two-way mirror. Likewise, knock on the mirror, see if you hear a hollow sound. Likewise, you can switch off your lights at night. If you've got a torch, a bright torch, you can shine the torch through the mirror and you will be able to see on the other side of the room as well. So a person needs to be very careful, very cautious. If you want to open up the screws of the mirror, if you want to open up. So that's why part of traveling also, you should have a, a mini tool set with the different types of screwdrivers as well, where you need to open up these devices. It's not just about closing it. If you have to open up the mirror, open up the screws, the wall sockets, a lot of the wall sockets, in the sockets, there are hidden cameras. So if you have to open it, and find out and check if there is a hidden camera, then that needs to be done because whoever is doing it needs to be prosecuted. Likewise, in Korea as well, they found that in the entire hotel room, the entire hotel room was bugged. All the rooms in the entire hotel was bugged and there were cameras there. So people who do this are, 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 are sick people. They are mentally deranged people. So a person should be very cautious and, and, and make sure that uh, you check all of this here and you make sure that you don't get caught as well. The amal for today is to be very particular about 
the miswak and uh, to utilize the miswak often plus 40 times in the day aqrab ila sunnah so it's a very very highly emphasized sunnah law la an ashukka ala ummati la amartuhum bis siwak inda kulli salatin if i were not afraid of causing difficulty to my ummah for it to be burden i would have commanded and made it compulsory on every salah in another riwayat la amartuhum bis siwak ma akulli wudu'in ma'al wudu'i inda kulli salatin so every wudu every salat to utilize the miswak may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and make an amal wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil